Hello, I'm Stafford Township Mayor Greg Meyer, and I'm here to talk to you about the proposed Stafford Township shooting range. Uh, the township, which includes the Chief of Police, Tom Delane, our Administrator, Matt Bonderhaden, the Township Council, and our engineer, Frank Little, spent a lot of time trying to find a good location for the police shooting range. Uh, many locations were looked at. There's a whole lot that goes into it. Uh, Stafford Township is approximately 47 square miles, uh, whether you're counting the water or not, it give or take a mile. But it's a very large township by New Jersey standards. Uh, despite the fact that it is relatively large and vast, uh, there's so much land that cannot be used. So there's just a finite amount of space that's actually buildable or usable for any purposes. So we went through a very comprehensive evaluation and we presented several sites to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. And they only approved one location, and that was over in the Beachview section of the township, over by St. Mina. Um, there was an area that was cleared, it seemed like it was a good spot, uh, however it is near quite a few homes and um, we want to make sure that when we do a project that we have the support of the community. So originally we scheduled a workshop for July 29th, we sent out letters to the community, about 600 of them in fact, uh, earlier this month. And the purpose of the workshop was to present why the shooting range is necessary and why this uh, site is ideal. And also, to get feedback from you, the members of the community, uh, wherever you live in Stafford Township, to offer your input. Well, since that time, we have received the input from the community, and uh, we have determined that it is not the ideal site for the shoot range. However, we wanted to show you the exercise that we went through, and also the chief wants to tell you why this project is important. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our administrator, Matt Bonner. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. So just a review from the, as the mayor said, <clears throat> there was a lot that was put into this, obviously working with the uh, Chief Delane and with the mayor and with the governing body to review the, the need for a shooting range. There's, a, there's an obvious need that was presented by the police department when <clears throat> we started back in 2019. And the need, and the chief will get more into this, was based off of qualifications, training, <clears throat> and just the, the overall effectiveness of the police department to come a lot more trained uh, department uh, with the officers included uh, to be able to, to work within the township and become the top-notch police department that they are and to continue on that track. The, the history, again, the chief's going to provide a, a, a history of the, of the shooting range. There was a, a shooting range back in 1998 to 2004. And there was a plan at that time to try to do something. Unfortunately, those plans did materialize. So back in 2019 and 2020, the mayor, along with the chief, uh, we worked together to try to look at eligible op uh, locations that we could bring a shooting range to. So that's what we're talking about tonight. <clears throat> Those locations considered were all over the township. We looked in Warren Grove. We looked at locations across from Ocean Acres. We looked in areas along Route 9, and we looked at uh, locations here at the township municipal building. We also looked at the location uh, that was proposed for the workshop on the 29th uh, and uh, at Island Woods to see it because that was where we received a jurisdictional determination from DEP to just go ahead and build the facility. Rather than just go ahead, we wanted to get community input before that would move forward and that was the reason for the workshop. That being said, the, the, uh, the other thing that plays into this are the locations that are available by the police department to use right now. So we investigated those. And the biggest thing is just the training opportunities and the, the times to be able to use those those locations. And that's why it's so important to look for the shooting range here in Stafford Township. Why build a shooting range? Uh, we went through not just the qualifications and the training, but it's for a more effective police department. So that's why we've been looking into this. And that's what the police, uh, what the chief of police is going to talk about a little bit more. So, Chief. Thank you. Okay, first off, uh, I just want to welcome everyone and thank you for uh, tuning in this evening. I want to talk a little bit first about the difference between qualification and actual training. Uh, the qualifications mandated by the state of New Jersey for a police officer to be considered qualified to carry a weapon uh, is extremely uh, low. The number of rounds that you have to fire uh, twice per year basically it comes down to you know a very minimal amount of, of rounds. It doesn't result in training. It's just uh, you're, you're shooting at a paper, and you get a score that says that you're qualified. To be considered trained, 
in, in my opinion and all the uh, all the other research that I've done on this is you're talking about not only are you able to hit the target, you're able to make determinations, you're able to shoot and move, you're able to work together in, in a teamwork fashion with other officers. So our training program here in Stafford has always been um, above others and it's by design. And the reason why we do that primarily uh, talks about the next category, which is liability. When we talk about liability, anytime there's an officer involved shooting or any type of deadly force situation, there's going to be some sort of civil, civil litigation as attached to that. Um, if, you, if you watch what's going on in the media, uh, some of the uh, more recent incidents of police use of uh, deadly force or deadly, uh, where there's in custody deaths, <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, liability that attaches to that. So what we try to do here in Stafford and most uh, other agencies that I'm aware of that are, are progressive and like-minded like Stafford Police, is we try to up the level of training for our officers. And what we do is by increasing that level of training, we increase their, their competencies, we increase their decision-making skills, and we increase their confidence levels. And if you look at confidence levels, uh, it plays a big part. If you're confident in your de-escalation skills and the other skills that we train and teach on a regular basis, uh, you're less prone uh, statistically to utilize and drawing your weapon and utilizing deadly, other forms of deadly force. So it's critically important to, to have that level of training at a level that is, uh, meets the standards uh, for that. We talked about the availability of other training facilities. So in uh, 2004, when the township entered into the redevelop or development agreement with Stafford Park, uh, we did have a, a firearms range there. I was hired in 1987 and the range was in existence at that time. Uh, we were uh, assured that when uh, Stafford Park was developed and the landfill that that range sat on at the time uh, needed to be remediated, which required us to, to abandon that site. Uh, since then, we have been uh, working with uh, the administrations over that period of time, looking and trying to seek out another range facility. Uh, so fast forward to 2015-16, uh, uh, we, the governing body at the time had allocated $950,000. Uh, the plan was to build an indoor firearms facility here at the municipal complex. And once we started getting into uh, design and uh, ventilation and bullet recovery systems, uh, we quickly discovered that that amount was uh, insufficient and it started trending up into 1.4, 1.5 million dollar range in 2015. Um, and it's obviously much higher today. So, uh, turn it back over to uh, Administrator Vondra Hayden and talk about some of the locations that were considered. So as the chief said, with the uh, clear need from the police department and working with the mayor, the council, myself, and our township engineer, Frank Little, we started to look at sites and determine what are feasible sites to look at. So these are the sites we looked at. We looked at 400 uh, Hayward Road, as the chief mentioned, over at Stafford Park. We looked here again at, at Town Hall, behind Town Hall, behind the police department, uh, at Lamson Road, Warren Grove, Stafford Forge, and St. Mina. St. Mina is the location, the, the one location that was determined by the DEP to have a jurisdictional determination, and that's why uh, we initially set the, the meeting up to have the workshop at that site. So this here's the first location. Uh, this is out at uh, Stafford Park. As you can see, it's highlighted there in blue. Uh, this is the former site of the shooting range, and when we looked at this site again, looking at the approvals, uh, Frank Little, our engineer, worked with DEP to, to see if this would receive a jurisdictional determination. Unfortunately, at this site, there were a number of different uh, wildlife pro, uh, prohibitions and we couldn't move forward here. So that was the first site we looked at, seeing that it was a, an original, uh, the original site of the shooting range. After we looked at that, uh, again, with the money bonded for the 950000 this was the site the chief mentioned that was looked at for an indoor range. We looked at it again, obtained estimates, looked at planning, design, and what it would cost to build an indoor range. The, the things that came up here was the indoor range qualifies the officers at the shorter distances, but not at the longer distances. So that was one issue. The other issue was funding. So with this site, when we, once we started to go out and get estimates, 
Uh, again, Frank Little came back with estimates in the o over $2 million. So those were the limitations there. Uh, then we look down closer towards Eagleswood. Uh, this site highlighted in blue is in Stafford Township. Uh, there were areas where we looked to try to acquire property from the mining operation there. Uh, unfortunately, there was also restrictions there uh, with different wildlife that Frank encountered when we looked at this site. <laughs> the next site is out in Warren Grove. So there's a, a, a Phoenix Pinelands that owns a location out there. It's another mining operation that we thought would be, could be a good site to put the shooting range uh, further out into the wooded areas. Unfortunately, we were unable to acquire any property there, and, and when our engineer looked into that, there were also restrictions out there that would uh, enable us not, not being able to do the shooting range there. Stafford Fords, the wildlife management area, as the chief mentioned, this was a site that was looked at in the past, roughly around 2013. Unfortunately, there were a lot of uh, prohibitions here, work, trying to work with DEP at the time, so unfortunately, this was uh, identified as an unusable location for the, for the shooting range. And so that brings us to the, to the location that was approved. Uh, part of the reason why it was approved was, as you can see where that large blue arrow was pointed, there's an open area of space there. So because the area was already opened up by the prior owner, it, that was part of the reason why the jurisdictional determination uh, was obtained from what our engineer had received. Um, as you can see, the, the other idea was the, the amount of feet back from, from the location of where the residential starts. Um, again, another reason why it looked like it could be a potential location. There are things that would have had it been updated as far as the township code, uh, but that location itself did have a deed restriction. The deed restriction, though, was only related to residential, and in this case, looking at a shooting range. Another reason why it was a, a potential site uh, to look at. That being said, the, the next thing to bring up, and I'm gonna let uh, Chief Delane talk about this, are the training facilities that the police department has, has used to, but has limited use to. So Chief, we'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. So over the years, we've looked at a, a number of facilities. So at current in Stafford, uh, we do uh, utilize the facilities of the Ocean Township Police Department. And for a variety of reasons, um, that range is uh, heavily utilized the number of ranges available to police departments is shrinking on an annual basis, so that facility is getting a lot more use. Uh, for us, it's uh, not efficient, as efficient as I would like for that. Uh, for example, uh, our scheduling allows us to train all our officers on Wednesdays without incurring any overtime costs. Uh, with the, the Weartown range, it's, uh, you, you, you take the dates that you get, uh, some of them we request Wednesdays, sometimes we get them, sometimes we don't, and it, it becomes problematic in when you have it scheduled on a different day, uh, we're, we're adjusting officers off their squad or paying overtime. So um, that range has uh, some other issues. We actually did look into uh, entering into a partnership, uh, looking to expand that range in, uh, in, in partnership with Weartown, and it just wasn't uh, feasible uh, to do that. <clears throat> For a period of time, we were utilizing the Little Lake Harbor Police Range uh, off of Route 9 down in uh, Little Lake. And that range had uh, some heavy residential areas that were constructed around that, uh, which became problematic for the use of that range. And it, it's uh, since been scaled back, the use uh, very much scaled back. And uh, Little Lake Harbor Police are, are actually looking for an alternate site to utilize for their firearms range as well. Uh, shooters. So, uh, Shooters is a a commercial shooting range facility in Little Lake Harbor. Uh, I've heard uh, many comments of, you know, why doesn't the police department just use shooters? It's, it's indoor, it's great, it, it would be perfect for this. So uh, when shooters did initially open, uh, we did actually look to uh, contracting with them to utilize our facilities, and for a variety of reasons, uh, we weren't able to, to make that work for us. Primarily, uh, there were some limitations on due to liability insurance purposes for shooters, uh, which prohibits drawing from your holster and moving and shooting, all techniques and tactics that uh, we require of our officers uh, moving and shooting uh, to make them, them proficient. That was one of the reasons. Uh, another reason, <clears throat> almost just as problematic, is that the fact that uh, shooters did not have a, a private space available to us uh, that would shield us, if you will, uh, from, from the public when we're training with their techniques and tactics. Uh, a lot of it is, uh, is things that uh, we would not want to get out to, to 
the everyday people so that they, they know what our tactics and techniques are. We uh, did for a period of time use the uh, Federal Air Marshals Training Center down in Pomona uh, years ago and there's a, a couple reasons uh, why that is no longer acceptable. Uh, number one is, is a uh, every air marshal in the United States has received training at that facility so the federal government has a, uh, a large block of time uh, blocked out where the range is not available. Additionally, uh, it requires a use of specialized frangible engine ammunition, which is double the cost of the ammunition that we currently use. And uh, distance location is, is also problematic in that it's a, on a good day, you have a 35 minute drive to the FAA center. It's a secured facility. You have to wait to be escorted to the facility. So the, uh, by the travel time to and from, waiting for escorts, things along those lines, we lose a significant amount of training time that can be better spent uh, training our officers up to a, a higher skill level. Stafford Forge Wildlife Management Area, if the administrator had, had referenced that, uh, we did look to uh, partner with uh, Little Lake Harbor Township. Uh, there was a old landfill uh, in that area that uh, we were looking to utilize and for, uh, again, DEP, it just didn't look like it was gonna be able to make that work. Uh, so we since have abandoned that as well. Uh, one other area that's not on, on the slide is uh, we, years ago we had looked to partner uh, with the shotgun uh, range out of 539 operated by the uh, Fishing Game and Wildlife of New Jersey. Uh, we looked at the partner with the Sportsman's Federation, Little Lake Harbor Police, the DEP Fishing Game uh, to upgrade uh, the shotgun facilities and rifle facilities out there and then create a, a police range uh, adjacent to that. Uh, we, we went down that road for a, a period of time and at the end of the day, uh, there were a number of restrictions that the state was looking to place on that particular site, which uh, didn't make it uh, uh, feasible to proceed forward. We've also looked at uh, facilities outside of the county. We, we looked at uh, Cape May County as a number of facilities. Uh, again, uh, limited availability. We looked at Burlington County uh, facilities. Again, uh, limited uh, opportunities there. Monmouth County as well. Uh, when you're talking about county-run facilities, uh, every, every facility indicated a willingness to work with us, uh, but the reality is they give preference to in-county police departments and you're, you're gonna pick up the pieces and fill in the, uh, the, the blanks in their scheduling. So it'd be really problematic and troublesome for us to have some sort of consistency for scheduling purposes and then travel time and distance to and from uh, would really eat into our, our training opportunities. So why, why do we need a, a firearms range in Stafford Township? Uh, I've, I've discussed some of that already and we talk about uh, as an administrator, I, I look to control costs as much as possible, and having the ability to have a range locally, uh, obviously it reduces your travel time significantly. It affords you scheduling flexibility. Uh, if we were to have a facility that we had the capability of opening up and sharing with other agencies, we obviously would get first preference. We would block out the times that we needed uh, before we'd open it to anyone else. Um, and then the other part is when we had a range back here in town, uh, we train our, our officers to a very high level. And as a result, any officers that we see have any uh, deficiencies that we need to correct or address, uh, we used to be able to take that officer off their shift when they were working, if they're working an evening shift, we could take that officer off their shift, partner them with a firearms instructor, and work on a one-to-one -one basis to bring that skill level and remediate the deficiency that, that we've identified. Uh, we don't have that luxury anymore. Uh, we're, we're, we're pinned to a schedule, a scheduled set of time. So if we have a, any sort of deficiencies or any sort of remedial or, or basic training that we want to do with our, our police officers, we, uh, we have to really schedule that and dial it in. Uh, there's no flexibility whatsoever. So. Uh, I indicated before, highly trained police officers it is critically important in my professional opinion in that the, the higher the level of training, you have the higher level of competency that the officer has, you have the higher level of confidence and you know, partnered with their de-escalation skills and their, their proficiency in firearms, 
use uh, results in less liability for the township and less use of force and less use of deadly force. So it's a, a critically important component to have that availability to the police department. So uh, that's the time I have for right now. I'd like to turn it back over to Mayor Meyer and uh, get some, some comments for you. Oh, well, thank you, Chief Delane. So I hope this uh, presentation was informative and um, educational to a degree to uh, members of the public that are interested in this project. So as um, we stated, as you've seen, uh, a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of thought has gone into finding the best place for the shooting range. And uh, as you can see, our options are fairly limited, and it really just came down to one when it came down to where the, the State Department of uh, Environmental Protection approved it. So given all that, um, it would have been irresponsible for us not to go ahead and um, gauge a community support by hosting the workshop. But as I mentioned earlier, we did receive enough feedback from the community, and also um, it's also given us an opportunity during this time to explain to them why the shooting range is so important. So we are still going to uh, continue to pursue other options and see what we can do. And if you have any interest in learning more about this, uh, feel, feel free to reach out to my office, 609-597-1000. You could ask for your administrator, Matt Von Der Hayden, extension 8559. You could also contact me by email, gmyhre at staffordnj.gov. That's gmyhre at staffordnj.gov. With any questions you, or concerns you have about the shooting range or anything else. So, thank you so much, and we'll see you soon.